Hello all of you lovely people, Jules here for WhatCulture.com and I don't know about you but I absolutely love it when developers put nods and winks to other games within their own titles. It's thrilling to see things like, I don't know, Psychonauts appearing in Alistair Madness Returns or a failed assassin in The Witcher 2 because it shows a sense of humour and creativity that's a joy for players to find. Yet sometimes things go deeper, sometimes these aren't just passing ships in the night but that these two seemingly at odds games are actually part of a wider video game universe. It's a topic I've done before and now I'm back with 10 more, as I'm Jules, this is WhatCulture.com, and these are 10 more video games that you didn't know were connected. But before we begin, I just want to quickly tell you about today's list sponsor, Black Desert Online. Black Desert Online is an epic next-gen MMORPG featuring a beautifully designed open world with crisp HD graphics, real-time action-based combat, amazingly detailed character creations, and a diverse range of classes for players to choose from. The game is currently celebrating the launch of its newest class, Shy. Shy is Black Desert Online's 18th class and features a giant boomerang as her main weapon for combat. I know, I know, that's cool enough, but where the new Shy class truly excels is in supporting other characters thanks to the unique protection and healing skills it brings to the battlefield. Black Desert Online features a huge array of life skills to upgrade, plus crafting and an economy-based system. It's frequently being updated, so there's always something new to try with both large-scale expansion packs as well as regular smaller content updates. So what are you waiting for? Use our unique link in the description below to get started and you'll get a 7-day free trial. But now, let's get back to the content. Number 10. Dead Rising and Left 4 Dead the Left 4 Dead franchise is an utter goldmine of sneaky easter eggs and references, and while the majority of these nods are pretty throwaway, there's one that connects the co-op zombie shooter with its undead brethren Dead Rising with elegant simplicity. In Left 4 Dead 2's DLC campaign The Passing, one of the safe houses has graffiti scrawled over by a familiar name. It reads, Otis, out of film, no helicopter, zombies are too fast, not gonna make it. Signed by Frank West, who of course was the well-known protagonist of the first Dead Rising game. Roughly a year later, Dead Rising 2 returned the favour with its Case West DLC, where players could find the phrase, don't startle the wit written in blood in an underground tunnel beneath the Fenotrans facility. The wit is actually a nod to the witch enemy from Left 4 Dead, which upon being startled by the player will act like Josh when he's run out of hairspray and will claw at you until near certain death. I'm still nursing the wounds from the last time I accidentally threw a half a used can in the bin. Jesus. Anyway, this back and forth between the games is both brilliant and terrifying when you consider the implications. Number 9. Grand Theft Auto and Manhunt Rockstar Games is no stranger to implying casual links between their various video game franchises, but none fit together quite as nicely as Grand Theft Auto and the ultra-controversial Manhunt. There have been countless references between the two series over the years, though the majority of them are subtle enough to be missed. One of GTA 3's radio stations mentions Casa City's proximity to Liberty City and name drops its corrupt police chief Gary Schaefer, who is an unseen fixture in Manhunt. Vice City features several stores which are also seen in Manhunt, as well as the Sprunk Soda vending machines, which would subsequently appear in both Manhunt and every major GTA game since. San Andreas and GTA 4 include many more visual and verbal references to the city as well, while Manhunt 2 liberally mentions Vice City and San Andreas and also features numerous cars seen in the GTA games. And if that's somehow not quite enough, then in GTA 5, Michael even directly mentions Casa City as the location of his first score. I'm not gonna lie, I really hope we don't go to Casa City because it sounds like an absolute hell hole, plus I really, really don't ever want to see Pigsy again. <sighs> Number 8. Jack and Daxter and Uncharted Years before Naughty Dog blew everyone's minds with the Uncharted franchise, they were scoring consistent acclaim for their Jack and Daxter platforming series. The very first game, Jack and Daxter The Precursor Legacy, was released way back in 2001, and one of the game's most memorable collectibles was the Precursor Orb, an orange egg-like object with a distinctive, esoteric design printed on it. Therefore, it's both surprising and also not at all that Nathan, I'll be having that mate, Drake finds one of these orbs which he labels as a strange relic. It's a nice 
touch, but maybe not a concrete link. So how about the fact that Nathan's wetsuit bears the logo Otzel, which is also the same species that Daxter is turned into? Yet, this isn't the only game that Uncharted is linked to, as in Uncharted 3 you can find a newspaper that contains information about the same virus that would go on to destroy the world of The Last of Us. Which means, in theory, that Jack and Daxter is a prequel and The Last of Us is the ultimately sad ending. Talk about a tone shift, right? Number 7. Metal Gear Solid and Silent Hill now, this is a really strange one, as I wouldn't have immediately put Silent Hill and Metal Gear Solid into a shared universe, seeing as one is a foggy survival horror and the other is a boxy, snaky strangler. Yet, it's true, there are tons of links between the two Konami titles. For starters, in the gawky lab section of Metal Gear Solid 3, you can enter a library-like area and see paintings from Alessa from the first Silent Hill and also God from Silent Hill 3. However, things get much more interesting when we consider Metal Gear Solid 5, which includes numerous nods to Hideo Kojima's PT, the playable teaser for what was intended to become the new Silent Hill game. But that was before Konami decided that money and success was evil and tried to burn anything resembling such from existence. Anyway, before it was cut from the game, Snake was supposed to be able to drop a decoy that would distract his enemies and would have taken the form of Lisa from PT, which is pretty terrifying, right? Well, not as unsettling as finding this boombox in Metal Gear Solid 5, which played the exact same horrifying broadcast as we could listen to in PT. Yet, it wasn't just a one-way deal, as PT's teaser trailer showed a cameo, albeit a gruesome one, from Chico, who appeared in Ground Zeroes, at this time sprouting bugs from their mouths in a disgusting fashion. Now, I'm not smart or unstable enough to understand how these two worlds are connected, but if the end result is anything like Metal Gear Survive, then I think I'll just die now, thank you very much. Number 6. Just Cause and Sleeping Dogs just Cause has turned itself from being just a piss-about sandbox game into something that is pretty much a crossover king. I mean, just look at the sheer amount of creative easter eggs across its four titles, and that is enough to fill several lists. But the one that we're focusing on right now is one that leads to a nice little crossover. Sleeping Dogs was an underrated gem, and while it never really got the love it deserved, clearly Wei Shen was a fan as you're able to dress him up in the duds of the absolute legend that is Rico. Now, normally this would just be seen as a bit of cross promotion rather than a crossover. But if you listen to the radio in Sleeping Dogs, you'll hear a commercial for the island of Penau, which is the fictional setting of Just Cause 2. The advert even name drops two mission-centric buildings from the game, the Three Kings Hotel and the Penau Falls Casino. Can you imagine the destruction if Rico and Shen went on holiday together? Lads on tour, buildings on the floor. Number 5. Hitman and Kane and Lynch Though the Kane and Lynch franchise came and went without much fanfare about a decade ago, that didn't stop IO Interactive giving the characters a fleeting final farewell in 2012's Hitman Absolution. Its predecessor, 2006's Hitman Blood Money, featured a newspaper clipping alluding to the demented duo's crime spree over a year before the first Kane and Lynch even came out. However, Absolution was more direct and actually showed you Lynch hanging out in a bar and later inside a prison and Kane letting off some steam at a firing range. And if you're feeling annoyed, with how much of a steaming pile of hot garbage the second game was, then you can actually kill both of these characters, thus lending credence to a theory that the reason why they don't have a third game is because Agent 47 off them in his spare time. Number 4. Mario and the Legend of Zelda Okay, so I know you're going to be watching this and saying, oh, but these games aren't in the same universe, and we already know about the pictures in Hyrule Castle, and yes, I know that these are some old references, but come on, let me dream, it's all I've got since Ewan was taken back to social services again. It's not my fault he fell into that Rottweiler cage and the door just happened to lock. Also, wouldn't it just be amazing to think that Hyrule is just one of the many planets that you can explore in Mario Galaxy? Come on, give me this. I'll tell you what, let's go a bit deeper. Because if you don't accept that maybe Mario and Link share the same interior designer's number, you can't deny that the enemies from the series show up in each other's games. This has to mean something, right? And while it might be a fool's dream to hope for a paper Mario game in which Link uses his 2D painting power to aid Mario, there are enough nods to keep that flame burning. Come on, come on Nintendo, you can do it! Number 3. Red Faction and Saints Row Nobody could really blame you for not paying too close attention to the Saints Row games as, to be honest, you'll be too busy shooting people, blowing up cars or, you know, flying to spot every little detail. But from the second game onward, one of the main villainous military operations you encounter are the Ultor Corporation, which sounds like a nice old stock bad guy name, doesn't it? Well, it turns out that they didn't just pluck this name out of the ether, as it has its roots in the Red Faction series, which was also developed by Volition. As Red Faction is set in the far future, it could well imply that 
Haltor got bored of Earth and decided that Mars was their next port of call. Maybe, maybe it could also be that the resources on Earth were used up thanks in parts to the saints destroying everything at the drop of a dildo bat, so had to go and mine somewhere else. Plus, it would only be the eighth or ninth most ridiculous moment in a franchise where you can murder giant rabbits, so yeah, much like what I said to your mum before having to take her to the hospital to have a Thomas the Tank Engine toy removed from her rectum, it's weird, but it fits. And also, that's my one per list. Number 2. Devil May Cry and Bayonetta Though the Devil May Cry and Bayonetta franchise aren't developed by the same company, they were both created by Hideki Kamiya, and so it's tough to ignore the many, many similarities between the hit character action games. Even at their core, the pair's attacks somewhat mirror each other, as well as enemies who jump ship. For example, in the DMC game, a giant phantom spider appears in Bayonetta as, and oh god, I'm gonna butcher this name, as a Phantasmarane? Is that how you pronounce it? Then there's in game items like the Bangle of Time, which shows up in Bayo as the bracelet of time, along with the description of the item which refers to a legendary Dark Knight, which is almost certain to be DMC's Sparda. However, there are a few issues with the shared universe. I mean, for example, there's no angels in DMC, but, but maybe it's a case of not being a shared universe, but maybe a split tangent universe, where an action splinters two timelines, and in one we get the original DMC and all the Bayonetta games, and the other all of the other Devil May Cries in their own separate time. And number one, Bioshock and Gone Home. At first glance, AAA first-person shooter Bioshock 2 and indie walking simulator Gone Home might seem like the last games that you'd expect to be sharing any common DNA. That is, until you realize that three members of Fulbright, the devs behind Gone Home, previously worked on Minerva's Den, the DLC expansion to Bioshock 2, which features a 1950s-style video game called Spitfire. In a lovely homage, Gone Home allows intrepid players to stumble across a Super Nintendo version called Super Spitfire, which is clearly a modern update of Spitfire, and seems to imply that Bioshock and Gone Home transpire in the same continuity somehow. Better still, Super Spitfire's dev name is CMP, a clear nod to the protagonist of Minerva's Den, Charles Milton Porter. In a 2014 interview, Fulbright co-founder Steve Gaynor confirmed that this was all intended. He said, in a totally non-litigious way, we lightly implied that it also takes place in the same universe as Bioshock. And trust me, I love both of these games deeply, so would you kindly just deepen this connection and make an underwater walking simulator or something, please? Thank you. And there we go, those were 10 more video games you didn't know were connected. I hope you enjoyed it, my friend. But before you go, I hope that you are well, because as I stare out at this window across the lovely trash heap that is Newcastle, it's got me thinking. We all share this green and blue marble that is adrift in space, and in that sense, whatever your outlook and your profession, we are all connected thanks to this shared space. Now, I might not know you, and you might not know me, but this amazing planet is here for us all to enjoy. So because of this bond, I just wanted to say something from the heart. I hope that you are well. I hope that you are happy and I hope that you manage to have a bloody good life. And if you're struggling with things mentally or physically, please remember you can ask for help. Trust me, people care way more than you might think and we are stronger together. And if you want to chat about this or anything else, you can follow me at RetroJ with a zero over on Twitter. As always, I've been Jules. You have been awesome. Never forget that. And I'll speak to you soon. Bye.